everything wrong with Mashal season 2. Oh boy, here we go again. Back to the academy where magic is as real as a unicorn riding a rainbow. Wait, magic is real. Mash's magic like status spread it faster than gossip in a sorority house. Yes, no one's too busy enough worrying about their own spell. Wait a goddamn minute. Mash is buddy buddy with the maggot lupus losers? Huh, that's an odd friendship. Can't wait for the spin out sitcom. Abbess, the bearer of bad news. Dropping truth bombs left and right. Innocent Zero got their creepy eyes on Mash. Surprise, surprise. Abel's not even a legit mage. Fake it till you make it, huh? Now, now Mash gets a golden ticket for the Bureau of Magic to prove that he's as magical as a potato. He's going to sprout. But of course, there's a twist. The judge has a side of magic parasite. Because why not add some extra drama to the mix? Oh look, Innocent Zero storing tantrum again. Threatening a full-scale wall just to get their hands on Mash. That's not overkill. But hey, our boy Mash ain't playing games either. He yanks out that parasite like it's plucking hair out of a chicken. Is it a chicken? It looks like a chicken. Now the Divine Visionary are having a good old debate. To execute or not to execute. All right in front of the person in question. Yeah, okay. Just when I Tali couldn't get any crazier. Here comes the headmaster Wahlberg in his sage wisdom saying, oh, plot convenience, like a timely intervention from the head honcho. So he's stating the obvious to suggest that MASH might hold the key to understanding Innocent Zero. That's some groundbreaking insight, Captain Obvious. I'm sure nobody else in the entire academy had figured that out. Look at this, Mr. Blessed Bureaucratic Bus Skill decides to delay MASH's execution. Because, you know, paperwork, Dot the design, party planner insists on celebrating MASH's survival by hitting the town for some fun. They they have to slide this sequence in just to make us attached more to the characters. Oh, and of course, give Mash a one. Meanwhile, Lance the perpetual drama lama is still hung up on beating Mash in the visionary exam for his sister's sake. The sibling's rival is a real magic here, guys. Hmm. Oh, look, it's shopping time. Lance and Fina on the hunt for new ones like it's a magical shopping spree. And look at that, Mash stumbles upon a relic of a one that's been collecting dust for centuries. Because of course he does. And naturally, he effortlessly lifts the ancient one, unleashing a flood of elf water, turning the shopping to a makeshift swimming pool but hey at least he gets a free one out of it that's a splashy bargain but wait there's more the other conniving mastermind stand his lackey margaret to ensure mash misses the exam why let some minds succeed when you can sabotage them instead mash and his crew pay a visit to regrow who is apparently shocked that mash has friends because apparently making friends is a rare feat in this magical world and according to lemon mash has got himself a future wife ah the wonders of teenage romance and just when you thought things couldn't get any more predictable rain swoops in to save the day wanting orders dastardly plan here you go you've been served hot convenience margaret macaron on a mission to rain's on mash's parade conveniently stumbles upon rain amis blocking their path what was he doing there like seriously you can't tell me it's just hanging out in the forest mm -hmm. no okay and margaret the epitome of overconfidence underestimates rain because of some past magic battle experience victory clearly winning a random experience automatically makes you the ultimate wizard right I agree. okay and meanwhile at mash's house it's game night with the dormitory crew mash just loses and storms off dramatically the real reason though humor he really wanted that cream puff obviously he didn't go out of the house accidentally to stumble upon rain and this sexually ambiguous man fighting his friend thinks he's storming off not because he's craving some oversized cream puff, but yeah. we all know this was due to the fact that the author needed a reason to make him go out of the house. And of course, he conveniently overhears Rain defending him in the midst of the battle. Why resolve conflict through actual dialogue when you can eavesdrop like a pro? Wahlberg, a walking exposition dumb, decides the perfect time to explain the difference between magicians. Bro will not let the story unfold naturally. Spoon fed me the details, my guy. And look, Margaret shocks and awe when they realize Rain is a three line magician. We did need that plot twist. Anyways, but fear not. Not. Margaret flees the scene like a classic villain, as retreat is always the best option when faced with inconvenient truths. Oh, look at that, just in the nick of time. Look at him, he decides to show up and thank Rain for defending him. Nothing says gratitude, like waiting until the last possible moment to express it. He didn't step in and let Rain cook, because, you know, he had it. And of course, a few days later, just before the divine visionary selection exam, Mash is confronted with by order Maddle, because why have a peaceful lead up to the exam when you can throw in one last confrontation for good measure? And finally, the exam begins in uh, a conveniently time explanation from the supervisor. Why bother with subtlety when you can just spoon feed the audience all the information at once? And look at that, welcome to the Hunger Games story. I mean the divine visionary election exam, where the main character bullshits his way through all the success and glory. But we all learned a valuable lesson in the end. I really love anime. So we got 
12 contestant going for 9 keys while dodging axe wielding minotaurs that are apparently immune to magic. People are not settling for a simple test when you can throw in a mythical creature for good measure. Alright, here's Mash who's conveniently asked to team up with Max, the guy who can resize objects. What? I know what you're thinking, especially the male viewers. I'm gonna need that power. The answer is yes, bro has the best magic for good back time. Anyways, together they stumble upon key hidden inside a balloon like bag, you know, what they were supposed to get from a bladder of a stroll swim fish. Oh, wait, wait, touching the bag steps off an item that attracts the Minotaur because, you know, that makes sense. And it does. So we can see Mash do something so bizarre. It's funny. All right, we got other contestants like Lance, Dot, Margaret, and Gang conveniently obtain their keys without breaking a sweat, okay. except for Dot, because dude's only personality is to be bit up every chance he gets. After the challenge, Max insists that Mash takes the key because, you know, honor amongst magical competitors and all that jazz. Now, he ain't gay or anything like that. He just wants rain badly. Oh, look at that. Another blood twist. He gets attacked by Carpaccio because, you know, having the ninth key just isn't enough for to deter attackers. Why settle for peace when you can have unnecessary violence? Thankfully, the fight is avoided when the examiner announced stage two of the exam, but Mash is really reaching for that plot armor now. He's picking a fight because he knows he will win with a gag. No, seriously, he will. Now, it's time for the team battle where they have to smash each other's crystals. But of course, humor is more important. So Dodd and Mash smashing their crystal in accident is the thing needed for the plot to continue, which I'm not gonna lie, that was funny. They only have Finn's crystal now, and they will make Mash fights with that Carpaccio guy eventually. Hmm, I wonder how this anime will go. And just like the first stage, they have to meet up first because, well, I guess consistency of the foreign concept in the magical world. We've got 13 ancient one known as Master Canes. One isn't just enough for the magical community. You gotta collect them all, right? So Carpaccio, the villainous mastermind who captures poor Finn and unleashes his magical stab wound attack, this guy is uh, hidden, basically, with less steps. Damn. So he conveniently possesses a Master Cane that transfers his damage to his opponent. Stab himself, you get the damage. Guess the SD? I don't know if that counts, honestly. Finn, the brave soul that he is, refuses to surrender his crystal because Mash's life depends on it. What a touching scene. Let me guess. Mash will come in the last minute and like the hero he is. And he really did that. Okay, Mash swoops in, saves the day, slamming Carpaccio's head through a wall like it's no big deal. Talk about late arrivals. Really makes the scene better. Somehow. I did not predict this. You know, surprise, surprise, surprise. surprise. Mash, who ends up injured. How will he bullshit his way through this one? Carpaccio reveals that the Master Cane chose him at birth as he was the chosen one. Bro really jinxes its own victory like that, bro. You started talking too much, you're going to lose. Just shut the fuck up, you know? He unleashes a bear of funches, but Carpaccio just shrugs him off like they're tickles. The power of sheer determination is no match for plot armor. Oh, look at that, there's a crack in Carpaccio's invincibility. There's a limit to the pain? Whoa, Mash, I haven't thought of that. Not gonna lie, this one has an explanation. It's also believable. And I hope Mash doesn't have to do anything weird. You know what? I take that back. This man just made a racket out of this metal wand. Symmetrical, nonetheless. You know, I'm not even gonna lie. This one got me doing this pretty good. And of course, Mash's knocks Carpaccio unconscious with a single blow. Now, he knows pain. The audience is left as shocked as Magicless beats a Master Kane. This is really unheard of, really. That makes Asa actually look like a normal bodybuilder. You know what? Power of friendships, not bullshit. It's like that. Carpaccio experienced pain for the first time, realizing that even Fiend possesses more strength than him. The lesson is that Finn has more balls than this Danga Rompa character. See you for the next three episodes.